I, I'm actually from a little fishing village and, uh, and farming country in the southwest of England. And I'd never really been in big cities. And uh, then I went to Bristol, and it was a, really quite a shock. And then I went from there to graduate work in Hamilton in Ontario with the steel mills, which was a huge shock as to the environment. And, and I couldn't believe that people could you know, do that to the natural world. My PhD at the same time uh, was looking at the basic fundamentals of the way climates come about, the energy exchanges. And in the early 60s, this was really quite new territory. So I saw a juxtaposition of the fact that, that here was something I wanted to see if I could improve in some ways or, or contribute to. There was something to do. Uh, but at the same time, I had some skills in another field that had never been applied in the case of urban climate. I've been measuring uh, climate at that uh, 49th and Knight Tower since 1978. And it's now the focus of a, of a national network, which will eventually come to Canadians in the form of their nightly weather forecast. And we'll be able to forecast in cities down to uh, individual blocks of 250 meters. And that, I mean, is just an amazing move forward. Most of the things I could do to help a city could be done, I could explain on the back of an envelope, make sure you know what latitude you're at and where the sun is going to be in the sky. So that's going to set the kind of geometry of the spacing of the uh, buildings uh, away from the streets. Uh, I think you should be thinking about the colors of the walls, but also particularly of the roofs, which are the most active part for the sun. You should be thinking about Again, the spacing of the, of the buildings and the streets uh, from the point of view of wind flow. The greatest satisfaction to me has been to see the field of urban climate uh, progress from the stage of being a purely descriptive field where we knew that the city had some effect on the atmosphere to be one where we now have a predictive science.